So these are your evolution video notes, and we're going to do these from the perspective of whale evolution. So most of this PowerPoint will focus on whales specifically as the example, but it'll still give you the basics of evolution too. So first of all, whale diversity. So how are there so many different species of whales? The answer, speciation. So speciation, you'll see the definition at the bottom there, is just the formation of a new species. So if you look at this slide, there's things like the blue whale, the humpback whale, or the gray whale, and they all have very different things about them, but they are, at the same time, all whales. Another slide of a little bit of diversity. So we have a sperm whale, a killer whale, and a bottlenose dolphin. So this is just more speciation examples. And if you'll see, there's another definition for you, species. So that's any organism that reproduces in a natural environment but still has fertile offspring. So killer whale speciation in general. Did you know that there are four species of killer whales? So if you look here, this version, oops, oh no, hang on. So this version on the left hand that you'll see is just an illustrated version, but it'll show males and females. The males are obviously the larger of the two. And just look at the colors and especially the patterns of the white marks. And then if you look at the picture over here on the right, you'll see actual pictures of these four different types of killer whales. So divergent and convergent evolution. So these are two terms that typically get mixed up very easily. So divergent is just one species develops into two over time. So if you look at the cladogram here, you'll see the bottlenose dolphin and the killer whale are both very closely related. So these at one time came from a common ancestor. So it's one species evolving into two. Now, convergent evolution is species that have similar traits, but they don't live in the same area, and they're not as closely related. So an example here is a dolphin and a manatee. So they are both aquatic. They both have the same type of skin. They're both mammals, but they have very different traits, and they live in very different environments. Another term you'll hear often is coevolution. So once again, killer whales, my favorite. You see a killer whale here eating a penguin. So the penguins over time are going to evolve to be faster at evading the killer whales. At the same time, the killer whale has to evolve to be quicker at catching the penguins. And remember that evolution is not just an individual. The killer whale can't decide, oh, I'm going to train and swim faster. It's the favorable traits over time are passed on, and as a result, the species tends to go in that direction. So at the bottom, you'll see the actual definition for coevolution. So one species evolution directly affects the evolution of another. And these are usually in a predator-prey relationship, like you see above, or a symbiotic relationship, so mutualism, commensalism, even parasitism. Genetic variation, then, is just those differences between the same species or same family. So Genetic differences are what you want. You don't want a bunch of clones because then, say, a disease comes through, it's going to knock out the entire population, not just maybe a couple of the individuals. And so even just look at the picture there. You'll see all the different dorsal fins, all the shapes, all the sizes. Now, obviously, the males have the taller fins, but you'll still see a variance in them. And those are just physical differences and variation. There's also going to be DNA differences inside their bodies as well. So let's just look at the fossil record. So evolution, just to remind you, is just a gradual change in species over time. Gradual being the key word there. So if we look at the fossil record, you'll see that vertebrates have been around for a long time. And as we move up, you'll see all the different animals of the past. And in the upper right-hand corner there, you see mammals. Now, whales are mammals, not fish. Hopefully you know that by now. So the issue here, though, is that early mammals were terrestrial, meaning they lived on land. They have legs. So why move to water then? The idea is that the ancestors of whales used to live on land, and they moved into the water. So things like selective pressures from nature. So they needed a new food source, or there were new predators on land to escape from, or there was less space. So it forced them to look toward the water. And if you just want to pause this video for a minute and take a look at that picture that just shows over time how whales became a water-dwelling mammal. So a couple other vocabulary terms you need to be aware of are natural selection and survival of the fittest. 
So in natural selection, the environment selects the best adapted individuals for reproduction. Now this isn't mother nature choosing you live, you die, etc. This is just simply the ones that are most successful in the current environment are going to live, reproduce, have more offspring, and those traits will be passed on. Survival of the fittest is basically the same thing. So it's a phrase used to describe natural selection. So in survival of the fittest, the ones that are best adapted will be the most likely to survive and reproduce. So there's four major pieces of evolutionary evidence. And like I said, this is going to focus on just whales, but this applies to anything when you're looking at the evolutionary evidence of something. So first up, the fossil record. So the earliest modern whales go back only 23 million years ago. So they're great swimmers, right? But they don't have legs. So where did those terrestrial ancestors come from and when did they live? So our current whales live in the blue Miocene period that you see there. But in the fossil record, there's some whale-like fossils that have strange teeth. And those teeth are more like current terrestrial mammals than whales, but they're from the Eocene period. So if you look over here on the red, that's where these whale ancestors lived. So here's just some examples of early whale teeth. So this is one of the earliest aquatic versions of the terrestrial, and you'll still see that they have some little teeny tiny back legs. So some more early whale teeth and legs once again. And once again, we have early whale teeth. And this time, look at the legs there, so vastly different from the animals you see now, as well as tiny hooves. And even further back, this is your full terrestrial with legs, and this is Pachycetus, which is considered an early whale, and we'll look at more fossils of this specifically in a minute. So here's another with tiny hooves, and it also has four legs. And this is thought to have been the transitional species. So transitional meaning it was the first species to go into the water but still live on land. So it was that first major step towards water dwelling. So the problem is, who are the closest living relatives of whales that live on land? So hooved mammals is the answer, but there's two orders. So there's odd-toed and even-toed. So just to kind of give you an idea, so the odd-toed ones are things like horses and zebras, rhinos and tapirs. Even-toed, though, are the things we tend to think of more when you think of pigs and hippos and camels, things with hooves, right? So the giraffe as well is here. So there's some anatomical evidence. So homologous structures, the definition's there in that purple circle. So same structure, different function. So if we look at the pachycetus versus the pig, so they have similar structures, but they lived at different time periods, and they used those ankle bones for different things. But you will see with the red arrows that they do have the same small ridges. Another example of homologous structures are the heel bone and the ankle bone present in a fossil horse and a fossil pig. So both of those are hoofed, but one's an odd-toed, one's an even-toed. And if you look at the whale picture in the middle here, you'll see the same general structure of a heel bone and an ankle bone. So analogous structures are something different. So these mean, this means same structure, different function. So the definition's there in blue. So if you look at these three things, we have a shark, a penguin, and a dolphin, right? So they all swim. They all use their flippers or their fins or whatever you want to call them for swimming, but they have different bone structures if you look at the picture zoomed in down below. Another example is a vestigial structure. So vestigial, the definition, is a reduced form of a once-used structure. The most common vestigial structure that people tend to think of is the femur in the pelvis that's in a whale, basically showing that once upon a time they had ancestors that lived on land. And you'll see the other picture there kind of shows the leg slowly becoming reduced in the current whale versus the original terrestrial ancestor. So here's a look at the whale phylogeny in general. So if you look in the blue, that's where you'll see our modern day whales. And if you look over on the right, you have one part of your hooved animals, and then on the left you have another part. And we'll look at a better cladogram in just a minute. So DNA differences are also something that shows a relationship. So you'll see a porpoise is kind of like a dolphin, and sperm whales only have two differences. Porpoise and a right whale, three differences, on and on. But interesting enough, sorry about the bell, interesting enough you'll see that a sperm whale and a hippo also have three things in common, as does the porpoise and the right whale. So take a minute, 
um, pause this and I would write these four things down. So these are your four major pieces of evolutionary evidence that link whales to four-legged mammals. And here's a better cladogram like I had mentioned. So you see extinct ancestor groups, but then you also see your rhinos and your horses. And then you see a bunch of other hooved mammals. And then down in blue is where you see the hippos. Then you see two types of extinct whale relatives and then modern whales. So the potential derived trait, for example, could be a blowhole there. And remember, ancestral traits are something that everybody has. So a possible ancestral trait here, being as they're all mammals, would be mammary glands. A little bit more in terms of embryology. So remember, whales are not fish, they are mammals. And there's also evidence of hind legs while they're developing in their embryo stage. And they are more similar to mammals than other vertebrates. So if you look here, you'll see the fish, reptile, bird, human zoomed in. And if you even look on the right, you see how much different the fish looks at step two than the other mammals. And the whale is that black and white photo up in the right hand corner. The whale obviously looks much more closer to a rabbit or a human than it does to a fish or say a salamander. So the end result, whale's closest cousin, hippos.